Have you ever tried going on a cabin crew interview and you felt like everything went well except that you did not get the job? You have been racking your brains to where it might have gone wrong but you just can't figure it out. In this episode, we will try to shed some light on that and I will enumerate ways the recruiter is evaluating you without you even knowing it. Hi, I'm Ruth and I help aspirants simplify the complicated cabin crew interviews. Before we start on the video, I would like to just give a short shout out to my first class members who are there with me every Wednesdays live. We do a live online class at 2 p.m. Wednesdays, Philippine time. And each of the member get a chance to have live access to me, ask me questions, do mock interviews, practice interviews with me before they go on their actual cabin crew interviews and give them feedback. So you will not have this kind of question in your mind anymore. Where did I go wrong? All right. <laughs> So there we try to recreate the scenario and try to assess you by your, you know, the way you answer the questions. I, I do try to give honest feedback so that you will be able to improve during the actual interviews itself. So if you want to be a member of the exclusive club, the first class members, if you want to be part of it, go ahead and click on join on this channel next to the subscribe button. And I will see you on Wednesday. Here is the scenario. You woke up extra early to attend a cabin crew open day. You arrived at the venue super early and started lining up. You waited two hours for your turn for an interview. And when your turn came, the recruiter was nice and polite. They talked to you, but the whole interview lasted for exactly five minutes long. And then you are done. You waited for your text for the next day invitation, but sadly, nothing came through. <sighs> What went wrong? You replayed your five-minute conversation in your head over and over and over again. You just can't figure out what went wrong. I have a few theories in mind and I'm going to share it with you. Let's go ahead and dive into it. Here are the possible ways the recruiter might have crossed you off the potential candidate list without you even knowing it. First thing body language body language is a huge deal in the cabin crew world our body language aside from it saying a lot about us without us actually saying anything the recruiters are trained to read body language and to figure out which candidate will most be fitting to the role so even if we say the right things however we can't keep eye contact or we slouch we frown or we unconsciously cross our arms like this and many many other body languages that you may think is nothing but actually is a red flag for the recruiter it is something that they would just judge you on and not invite you for the next round top tip is listen to this if there's only one thing that you would get from this episode is this get this their judgment and your test as the applicant starts the moment you enter the room so even if no one is talking to you yet they see how you interact with others how's your posture do you usually frown or do you have that naturally friendly face you're always on are you just like oh, okay phone <laughs> <laughs> all right so you have to be always on keep your phone off look alive look alert be alert smile at people smile at strangers this is what they're judging you more than your answers to the interview of course it still counts but this is where they really look at you and especially if there's a lot of applicants this is where they try to poof poof poof, poof remove everybody that we this is too much there's too much work for them. So this is how they sneakily judge you and just clean up the crop. And then just leave the potential candidates, the high quality ones behind. So this is how they do Next theory that I have for you is not following instructions. If you're not following instructions, you're automatically not on the list. You're automatically crossed off from the candidates in the running due to the number of candidates like i said earlier that's the reason for it they just want to cut it off just they don't want people who don't follow instructions so sometimes they put it in the job advertisement sometimes they they do it in the welcome announcement so pal they did this in the welcome assessment when they welcome you if you pass the impact interview you're on the next round on the next round 
they will welcome you welcome this is pal blah 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 we're gonna do a series of tests and i just want you guys to focus on your test and don't look back and then just give it to us right after so they give the instructions so swiftly so fast they make it sound casual like it's not an instruction it's not deal breaker something like that it's so casual you're so like okay let it pass by but then when you take the exam and you look back to the recruiter anybody who look back is automatically out they give you a number right sometimes so it's easier for them to identify you or sometimes they specifically ask you to sit down on a certain place so they know who you are and when you look back you're out so this is how sneaky they are and this is how they can make their life easier you can't blame them this is how they make their life easier because the applicants minimum 100 in a day that's on a slow day all right there's so many applicants to go through and to give a fair chance to everyone they put this this little mind bomb test on you that you don't even know so that's why even if you answer the question correctly your resume is the perfect english grammar but you didn't follow instructions you look back you're out so no explanations they will not explain to anybody because that will just take so much time it's up to you to figure out yourself and thank god for youtube and i could finally share this knowledge because it when it was my time there's no way to figure it out <laughs> we could just theorize all the time we can't even figure out what's the theories of other applicants so you guys are so lucky anyways that's my rant and another example is for example they will put in the dress code wear a blazer jacket and a short sleeve shirt so if you show up the next day without this then you're automatically out because it shows you don't follow instructions all right now we have covered two of my theories on why it may be that you got eliminated from the running to be the next cabin crew <laughs> And hang on for my last one because this might surprise you and you might even have experienced this yourself already. But first, if you are loving this content so far, please let me know by giving this video a thumbs up or a podcast review if you're listening over at our podcast channel that really helps me out a lot and i really hope that you know that let other people know that this information is useful and helpful to them as well so if you do give me a review it really really makes my day so i hope that you do that so i would really appreciate it a lot from the bottom of my heart if you give me a podcast review or a thumbs up on this video now let's go to my third theory my third theory is what i call reactive negativism okay so this is something that you already know you always have to be positive during the interview never say anything sad or show that you are frowning you are a bit angry or say bad things about your previous employer da 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 da, da. you already know that but did you know that they try to get you off guard as well during this test if they give you this test it would look something like this for example you are applying for qatar airways and then they would say is this your first time to apply and then you say no and then they will say what happened the last time and of course obviously you didn't get in that's why you're applying again right so you have to own this answer <laughs> don't answer that i didn't get in the group interview you know or don't say that oh my god i went through the finals but i don't know what happens when a final interview didn't get in so don't say things like that because it shows you're still hung up and you're viewing the experience as negative if you want to win this question you need to focus on what you have learned during your last time and what you have gained during your last time so you could say something like oh i was able to go to the second day it was so much fun me and my friends went in and i gained new friends i didn't get it but it's okay because the experience was worth it something like that and then always smile never show a sad face a frowning face because cabin crews if you've noticed they are required to smile on board all the time if you exhibit that quality even if you're talking something about negative then you're in because that's the quality that's the personality that fits the cabin crew interview there's no discrimination it's just the way it is it's just the personality that has more success rate at being a cabin crew so there you have it 
my two cents about reactive negativity. <laughs> That's my two cents about that. Okay, I have a little story time for you guys. It is also in the Qatar Airways application and this is where they tested reactive negativism on us. I have a friend, she has a really good eyelashes, you know, really, really natural and it's just really bushy <laughs> eyelashes. So she has a really nice eyelashes naturally. And then we were on the second day of the open days and the recruiter just suddenly went to her face. Are her lashes real? And then <laughs> she was like taken aback. She was a little bit shocked and she was like... <laughs> <laughs> and she said, oh, she laughed. That's her initial reaction because she find it funny that they're like all over her face. The two of them, two of the recruiters. So what they did is they tried to shock the person. They tried to shock my friend and accuse her of having fake lashes. So <laughs> naturally, if we are on the negative side of things because we always go through different phases right if we are not feeling that well that day we'll probably say oh no these are real oh my god how did you even think that this is not real right but during that day she was having fun we were all together so she just said she laughed and she said oh my god these are real <laughs> she was laughing like that and then she you could even tug it tug it tug it you can take it away <laughs> so they were laughing it was a good laugh and she got through that round. And I just realized they were trying to purposely offend her or do something negative or like make her feel body conscious so that she would, you know, crack, cry, whatever. She would be negative. But she didn't. So she got in. So that's so funny. Because you know what? The English exam is so easy. Everybody can pass that. That's not really the test. The test there is is if you don't react negatively and if you follow the instructions during the test and the quiz and the exams, all right? So there we go. That's my theories. My theories are based on personal experience. If you have your own theory, would you mind putting it on the comment down below so we could help out others who can, you know, finally try to solve this mystery and you know what guys we can solve this mystery together comment it that below if your other theories are you know making sense we'll put it on a list and compile it into another video <laughs> all right because this has been plaguing me before when i was applying and i was like i can't sleep so many nights because i just keep replaying replaying i don't know what happened i don't know what's wrong and they won't tell you what's wrong they don't have the time to each and every one of you you need to improve your english you need to improve your posture you need to do this you need to do that you need to do that mm, no having said that i do have a big disclaimer yes and the disclaimer is that tips on this video are not a personal attack on you the viewer or the listener if especially you are one of those viewers who have recently got rejected and don't know why i know you're still in that sore place you're still that in that place of being hurt and this video is not supposed to attack you in any way just bear that in mind i am in no way saying that it's your mistake or i'm putting shame on you i'm just trying to shed some light on this mystery because i myself have been through that and i myself know how how ridiculously painful it is so i am with you i feel you girl i feel you boy i feel in that situation so this is just a disclaimer that i am not trying to pinpoint a mistake on you or something like that saying that i'm better than you no it's quite the opposite i'm saying here is that these are the things that might have happened these are the things you might improve on your next try because i'm saying that you try again you should try again don't stop okay i'm on your side please don't attack me on the comments i do get bashers all the time and what they do instead of telling me that they got offended what happens is they tell me i'm so ugly my english is not so great or my teeth are crooked i know i know my teeth are crooked but i got in i got in qatar i got in pal i got in oman air so it really doesn't matter i hope that instead of you focusing on my flaws because you got hurt by what my tips are or what i'm talking about in this video i hope that you find it in your heart use me as an example of an imperfect person who was able to achieve her dream to become a flight attendant even if she was imperfect all right so hopefully this video will not turn into a basher 
fest on the comment section. <laughs> Sometimes it happens. Anyways, enough of my rant, guys. Next Monday, our episode will be about interview question tutorials all June. I'm just going to answer, give you a sample question, sample pandemic related cabin crew question, and a sample answer all of June. Count on it. See you next Monday. If you are looking for ways to level up your application game, the next video that I would recommend for you to watch is the 10 things I would do differently if I were applying as a cabin crew today. So go ahead, check that video out if you want to know what have changed, what have not changed, and what is my strategy if I'm going to apply during this current time. So you know what I'm saying? <laughs> go ahead and click on that video on your screen right now. I will see you there and fly with you soon. Bye.